now for today. We bless you, God, for those that are here. We ask, Master, now that you continue to give us a wholesome word, a solid word, and then let us be receptive to all that you will give. We ask now, God, that we'll continue to allow our lives to be an example to somebody else along the way. That, Master, we'll be able to continue to know that, you, that we're kingdom citizens and we employ others to be kingdom citizens with us. We thank you again for tonight. We thank you for those that are here and those that are not. We ask and pray that you will continue to bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Second Timothy two. Second Timothy. Second Timothy two. Okay. Thank God, Miss Park, being with us tonight. Right. Why do you go? Another scripture I want y'all to put your finger on. Isaiah 44, verse 3. Let's see. Yeah. Isaiah 44, verse 3. Said thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore in your hearts as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. We're in 2 Timothy 2, 1, 2, 3. I got a question uh, uh, after reading those, uh, those scriptures. You know. How many of y'all understand mentoring? Mentoring, mentoring, mentoring. Oh, oh, okay. Mentoring. Mm-hmm. Yeah, do you want to say something? Mm-hmm. You want to know, we assume that we know what mentoring is. We assume? Yeah. <laughs> well, what, what, do we, what do we know it is then? <laughs> <laughs> what, what would be mentoring if we're going to look at, if we look at the Christian community, what do we, what do we, What do we, what do we? Well, someone under your wings and spending time with them. Hold on, I can't hear you. What's that now? Taking someone under your wings and spending time with them. Spending time with them? Mm-hmm. What are you, what are you, what are you doing in the spending time? Teaching. Teaching impact in your life. Impact teaching? Okay. Trying to develop them. Trying to develop them. Huh. Okay, okay. Y'all on the right track. Boy, y'all. Hey, Miss Sean. How you doing? All right. Hey, Mark. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's, let's look at this. Let's look at this. We're going to take some out of our wings. We're going to spend some time with them. Uh, we're going to give them something. Are we giving them something that we have, or are we giving them something that we're supposed to have? <laughs> 
something that we have. So is it effective because we have it? Should it, should it be effective because we have it? Right, it should, should be. Effective. Should be, should be. So, so now, th this is my next thing. What is excellence? What, when we say walking in excellence, what is walking in excellence? What is, if we got a, if we got a mentor, what do we, what do we talk about when we say walking in excellence? Yeah, walking in excellence. Um, greatness. greatness. Greatness, okay, greatness. Miss Cynthia, you want to say something? somebody and, I, and I'm going to give them what I have and I'm going to walk in excellence, I'm going to walk in a correct fashion, in a correct way to where they won't miss. Right? That's right. They, they don't need to miss what I'm saying. Yeah. Not, and, 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 and I like the word the other said a few minutes ago about assuming because see, in, in mentoring somebody you can't ever have an assumption. You can't, you can't ever have an assumption. You got to know what you know. And then you got to walk in such a way that they catch it because a lot of stuff is not taught, it's caught. Mm -hmm. All right? So, so we're gonna if we're gonna catch this and we're gonna we're gonna do it right. I was I was looking at something and I and I and I wrote this down. I wrote this down because I think that in every facet of life, when you come down to the Christian community, I think that the church have failed God in actually doing it the way God said it. And so Paul said, Paul, Paul wrote it this way. He said, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. So if God gave us grace and he freed us, then what he said was, In the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. He said, So whatever you saw in me, he said, You caught it from me. I want you to give it to somebody else that's faithful. Somebody that's in order, they're going to walk in excellence. Because, see, if you don't walk in excellence, you're going to fool somebody that you're doing it the right way, and they're going to be fooling. So, yeah. That makes sense, don't it? Mm -hmm. All right, so, so what God showed me when I was looking at this, he showed me how, and I, and I saw this on something the other day. Uh, how many of y'all brush your teeth? I prayed it all. <laughs> uh, uh, all right, all right. Now, if you're brushing your teeth, eventually the tube of toothpaste is going to get empty. Right? How many of y'all have ever put that toothpaste back in the tube? <laughs> y'all ain't ever did that, have you? It's not possible. It, it, it's not possible. Well, once we empty out and give it to somebody else, it don't belong to us any longer. What God actually does for us, he supplies us with newness. Well, I can't ever continue to give somebody newness if I don't ever pour out. Right? So what God said to us tonight is, he said that we got to start pouring out. We got to stop holding all this stuff in, but we got to do it in excellence. We got to do it with a strong heart, a strong mind, a strong grace of God. Because see, what actually happened with people, if I don't do it the right way, I'm going to mess somebody up. I got to walk in such a way, and I'm talking about in my public life as well as in my private life, I have to walk in such a way that people will understand the grace that I'm upon. Yeah, so, so what, what, what Paul said here, he said if you're going to really pour into somebody and mentor somebody, because see, in, in, every, in every area, in every area, I think that every man, every woman got somebody there watching. And so if, if, if you're watching somebody, then what you're doing, you're pulling from them. You're, you're always pulling from them. And so what, what actually happens, if Deontay was pulling from me or I was pulling from Deontay, we are servicing each other. And what, what, what Deontay might meet somebody at work or I might meet somebody at work, what actually happens because we've sharpened each other, we're going to give out what we've sharpened in. Yeah, because that's, that's our purpose, that's our assignment, that we might be able to give to others what God has given unto us. And he said, give this to faithful men. You got to find somebody or let God show you the people that's faithful, that really want to know. You got, you got to have people that really want to know, really want to get into, really want to grab hold to that stuff that you have. 
And that's a lot of that's a lot of stuff we have we don't need to give nobody. We don't, to, we don't need to give. I'm talking about nobody we need to give it to. We don't, we don't, we don't, and, and, I, and I was thinking, I was thinking that I, y'all, y'all ever met people that uh that know everything. Yeah, Jesus, they know everything. And so when they start talking, they talk about everything. But notice that in the talking, they're not really sure about what they're talking about. And so what you do when you mess up people that, that basically have a low self-esteem about themselves. If, 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 if you women was really mentoring women that was actually wanting to go somewhere, you don't ever need to get a person that got so left low self-esteem that they don't grab hold of what you're saying. You got to pull them up to your level. And there's a lot of people don't want to come up, but you have to catch them and pull them up. Because, you know, now, I, and I said this about the mentoring part. Some people don't see what's in them. But you do. You, you, see, you see what's in them. So what you do, you pull that out of them and you keep working it. You keep, you keep working it. You keep working it. And by you working it, you're putting out of them that, that God had put in them. Because the Bible said that God put something in all of us. And so being that you are spiritual, you ought to pull that thing out of them. That's what the mentoring calls it. Because, see, there's some stuff even in here that I see on Sunday morning, Tuesday night. I see a lot of stuff. I see a lot of people. I see a lot of gifting. So what God said, you got to pull it out. Now, sometimes people say, well, Pastor, I don't know my purpose. I don't know where I'm going. And I've told so many people, yeah, you know, you, you know, you know, you know, you know. And they be want me to tell them something. They be want me to tell them. He said, what you think it is? I said, well. He said, why you won't tell me? Well. If they don't know how they expect you to know. <laughs> they just hope you know. They, well, now sometimes, sometimes I do know. Sometimes I, sometimes I see it. But see, the, the thing is, I think that's a lazy person. Yeah. That, that's a lazy person that I always want to show you. Pastor, just tell me what it is. But see, now now think about this. Think about this. And it goes back to back to what you said if they don't know. See, what most people do is that if I said it, if I said it, they are basing their gifting on what I say. Not on what God said, not on what they heard from God. And so it becomes lazy to them because they said the pastor said. It. And so if I ever want to stop, I come tell the pastor, Pastor, I can't do this no more. But if God said it, and you caught it, then you're not going to tell God I can't do it no more because, see, you don't know what the response is going to be. Only thing I do, I mentor that around where you are. I pull it out of you. I make excellence come out of where you are because that's what we're here for. Now, I don't believe, I don't believe that a church ought to walk in a way to where we don't walk in such a way that God don't get no glory out of what we're doing. I think that in everything we do, in everything we do, and, 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 and I'm going to say this, there are some stuff that God is, is pushing at us right now that in the next six months, y'all going to think we've been doing this for 15 years. Mm-hmm. And, that, and that's what God said. Because see, if, if, if we're going to shabbily do it, we don't need to do it. Yeah, you don't, you don't need to do it. If you're going to half do it, then don't do it. Right? Now, now I'm one of them kind of fellas. I don't like last minute nothing. I, I just, I, that bothers my nerve. It just, you know, I, I was, I was uh, saying this day, my daughter called me, and she wanted me to do something. And I said, Courtney, I said, when do you want me to do this? Well, I, I want her today. Why you called me yesterday? Why you called me last week? Well, uh, that I need to know by this bias, yeah. I don't ever let somebody else's failure to plan cause me to get in a hurry. You're going to ever push me because, you know, you know what I'm saying? We should never try to push God because we didn't understand that it's a preparation in where we're going. It got to be a preparation. It got to be. So if I'm going to mentor somebody, I got to mentor people to understand that when I go to God, I have to always be prepared. Wow. Why am I? They said, they said, God is God. You can tell him anything. Anytime you can just tell him. No, 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 no. See, you, 
you got to be prepared to go before God. Now, you know, uh, I, I think it was, uh, uh, was that Esther in the Bible that they got all groomed up because she had to go see the king? And, yeah, yeah, you know, right. she had to. Yeah. They, they, they groomed her up and, and put all this stuff on and all that. You know, she was preparing to go see the king. And, 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 and so, so when you go see God, I think you ought to prepare. You know, you ought, you ought, and, and why should I prepare to go see God? No, because, see, whatever God's going to tell me, because Beyonce and I are in the same line. You see what I'm saying? Well, what God gives me, he's going to give to him. Whatever God gives him, he's going to give to me. So we don't need to throw each other off. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Well, let me go back to where I was. <laughs> let me go back. How many of us, how many of us is ready to pour out or be poured on? Mm -hmm. Cause see, see, for a long time, we did it the way everybody else did. It. Yeah, we just we just did things. Now, now, I, I, I hate to say this because Sister Parks here. You know, she's our, she's our visitor, so, but I'm going to have to say it. This, That's how this is my spirit. <laughs> how many of us have been at churches that they did the same thing the same time every year? Mm -hmm. And if you didn't do it that, well, you know, we always do it this time of year. Yeah. Same time, same way. What if God poured his spirit? Because, see, we had the women's conference Saturday. And so we say that we need to prepare for next year. Well, it'll be a crazy thing now to do it the same way we did it this year. That would be ludicrous to do it, you know. So what you do is you start preparing and let God pour his spirit out. Because, see, if he's pouring his spirit, then there's always newness in his spirit. That's always fresh water when it comes down to God doing something different. And so what God said in the mentoring process, we have to teach people to take the higher road. You should never, ever want to do it the same way all the time. You, you, you never, you never, it, it don't, even here on Tuesday night, it seems like we do it. Y'all know that when I come out sometime, I, I say something or I, I'm trying to hear what God's saying. Because we can't do it the same way all the time. That, that's a foundational thing that we have to keep doing, but we have to always access the Spirit of God to say, okay, what if it changed? What, what, what if it changed? What if one night, Margaret, we came in here and the Lord said, we're going to have service tonight. And so for some crazy reason, Adrian showed up. He said, I just thought I'd come by that night. What if for some crack? Now, that, that sounds crazy, don't it? But what if we're, we're accessible to the water pouring, through the Spirit of God outpouring where we are? Because, see, we keep talking about changing. We keep talking about doing something different. We keep talking about doing it a different way. I'm tired of being the same. But yet, when His Spirit comes, we kind of. And the Bible says, quench not the Spirit of God. And so, if I'm going to be accessible to the Spirit, I got to let the Spirit mentor me. Put me on his arms and say, okay, I'm going to take you to the next place. Because what I'm doing is not gaining people. I need to gain people. I need to gain because there's a, there's a young boy, a young girl, a young woman out there that don't know what you know. They, they don't know how to get to God. They, they, don't know, they don't know how to get to that place to where they say yes to God. They don't know that there's salvation in, in calling on in that. They don't know that I can just pray. I don't have to pray long. They don't know that I don't have to come at church on Sunday morning or Tuesday night to get God. I can get God at the grocery store, get saved in the aisle on the seventh aisle where the cereal are, get the Holy Ghost on the seventh aisle, speak in tongues on the seventh aisle because somebody took me. But if I don't see it that way, then I look, I look. I need, I need us to understand that, that, that what Paul said, he said, whatever you've seen, he said, I need you to access it into somebody else. I need you to pour it out into somebody else. Don't ever take what you have and hold it. Because see, by you holding it, it's not doing, it's not doing nobody no good. It's not even doing you any good to, 
you know. And so he said, he said, now, he said, what I need you to do, he said, I need you to give this to faithful men. Now, he said, commit this to faithful men who shall be able to teach others. Now, now, how many of y'all, how many of y'all understand gifting? How many of y'all understand gifting? Gifting. Amen. Gifting, gifting is something that is birthed in people. Now, for every person that accepts Christ in the life of God gives us a gift. But now, if there's no outpouring of his spirit, there's barrenness. You can't have no baby. They have no spirit. <laughs> Woo! Amen. Now, that's the only time the other day that we want to get pregnant. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. I'm tell, I was telling somebody when, uh, when, Courtney, when Courtney was about to be born, I was, I was in, the, in the labor room, and they had that thing on. Stunning. There you go. Boop, boop. Boop. That was the hottest day I've ever been in my life. I like to fell out. <laughs> I had about four shirts on because it was in February, so it was cold. Right? I done pulled them all the way down to my t shirt. I done got all, I done got all. <laughs> I told the doctor I'll be back. <laughs> Amen. But listen, listen, listen. These are times that when God starts doing something, we, we want to have a baby. We got to have a baby. So I had to get in a position. I had to get a, now, what people have been taught is that all you got to do is show up at church and get saved. Now, they define salvation on the fact that you was at church more than two Sundays. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you was a regular member, everybody in the church was saved. As long as your name was on the road, you were saved. That's how they define it. They, they define it. Especially if you pay time. Good time. That's one of my good numbers. You say. <laughs> you you say. Well, that 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 that's not no. Mm -mm. That that no. You have to have an indwelling of the Spirit of God. What God said in John 6, He said, if Jesus don't draw you, you can't come. And so what He did, He drawed us to a saving place. After we got saved, he cleansed us. After, after he saved us, he filled us with his spirit. He filled us. Now, when you, when you look at the filling, you got to look at, you got to look at that, I, that every filling has an overflow. Every, every filling has an overflow. And so your overflow is going to flow out, but it always ought to flow out on somebody else. It ought to always. Now, you can't ever determine, you can't ever determine your knowledge of, of, of what God is doing. Because there's a lot of people got vision, but they don't have the whole vision. They got the V. <laughs> Amen. And, and when, what, what you think about it is that, that some people come into an area where God will fill them, and they turn the faucet off. They don't, they don't want all the spirit. Because some people are nervous about what the spirit does. They, they're, they're nervous. Now, we talked about this one night in here. Now, speaking in tongues is not an evidence that you've been filled. People have said that for years. Speaking in tongues is not, no, that's not the evidence. No. They spoke in tongues the day of Pentecost um, because there were different nations out there. And so when the different nations were out there, they spoke in tongues, and every nation knew that word that was coming out of those disciples' mouth. Spoke. Now, I have a gifting of speaking in tongues. I can, I can speak in tongues. Well, what actually allows you to know that you have an indwelling of the Spirit of God is how you react. It's how you react. Because there's a whole lot of folks speaking in tongues that cuss you out. <laughs> And I'm talking about some cussing. Hey, 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 do <laughs> Woo! He said, was that tongue you were speaking? <laughs> but, but, but what God said is that, that when I get an indwelling of the Spirit of God, and, and if I'm going to transfer it, 
into somebody else, I have to stay close enough to them. I have to stay close enough to them to where they take on my spirit. They have to take on my character. Yeah, y'all seen them? Y'all seen them Samsung phones they have now? If you put them back to back, they change information. Yeah, we have to get so close to folk that we exchange stuff. We have to, we have to get so close to them that we exchange stuff. Now, uh, I'm, I'm jumping. I guess y'all can tell I'm jumping. But listen, listen, listen. If if if, if I get close enough to somebody and I exchange what's in me, God's going to fill me back up. But what he does is, because I'm worthy enough of the filling, as well as the putting out, then he puts me in a place to where I grow. Now, if I can't grow, they can't grow. Everybody needs to grow. Everybody needs to go somewhere. You don't ever want to be in a place to where you're not growing. Amen. When the, when the boy put the flowers out there, the young man put the flowers out there, he told me, he said, you need to water them until they catch root. And so every day I come out here and I water those plants. He said, because if you don't water them, they're going to die. Well, I heard somebody say, sir, the one of the ladies said, sir, it's not the root that determines the fruit, but it's the fruit that determines the root, or the root that determines the fruit, something like that. One, one of them said that. And I thought about that today, that there's a lot of, there's a lot of people try to see what's on the tree without seeing what's up under the ground. Yeah, if there's not a transfer, it might be because of what's in the ground. You might have a fake tree. Amen. Now, there's another thing that you might, you might have a fake tree as well as a weak tree. Now, there's three men in here. There's three men in here. Three men in here. How many of you women in here want a weak man? Don't raise your hand. Don't. <laughs> well, listen, listen. If, if we don't want weak men and weak women, why do we want a weak God? Why do we want a weak faith? Why do we want a weak spirit? Now, when I say weak, I want to I want to I want to deal with it on this basis. How many of us want a man that we control? Okay. Amen. Why why would a why would a woman want a man that she tells he don't have a direction? Amen. Yes. She got to tell him, well, baby, this is how you do. No, you need Well my wife told me now, I can't do that. <laughs> Why? Why would, why would? Why would we want a weak God? So he said. He said you got to commit these to to faithful men. You got to faithful, strong, faithful. Now the strength of it is, is they're not nervous about giving it to somebody else. Now I've seen a lot of pastors. I've seen a lot of pastors. And I can talk about pastors. I've seen a lot of pastors are nervous about other pastors coming to the, the pulpit or their pulpit preaching because they don't have the same word. They don't have the same word, and so what they do is they 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 say, "Now uh, the Lord, the Lord didn't lead me that that way." They members might even say, "Pastor, won't you get such such?" Now the Lord didn't lead me that way because he's heard, and y'all heard me say this. I, I I talked to a friend of mine, and, and he said, "I ain't gonna let that you come to my church, preacher." And I said, "Why?" He said, "You go over my folk here. They 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 ain't gonna understand what you're saying." And I said, "What you tell me?" <laughs> I want to know. I want to know what you tell me. Because I know I'm not telling them nothing no greater than, you know, I'm, 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 this is all about, well, it's not the only Bible I got, but, that, but all I'm about to say, this is an English standard version of Bible. I think I got a Schofield, I got an NIV, I got, a, you know, I got several of the Bibles that I look in. But, but think about, think about that. If I'm, if I'm coming from the scripture and God gave me something, why would you be nervous about what I say? If it's going to strengthen your people, all you got to do is carry it on. Okay. Amen. Because see, now, and I'll say this. i said this to you. I said, I've been in a lot of pulpits. And the only reason Deontay, I went to the pulpit is God assigned me to that pulpit because that pastor wasn't strong enough. And my spirit stayed in that pulpit for him. That's the only reason I went. I, I went to the pulpit. I said what God said. And my spirit remained. And I knew my purpose for being there. I knew why I was there. I knew my assignment. What God is saying is that if we're going to mentor people and we're going to do this
this thing right, we got to be able to allow the Spirit of God to rest in us. And then, not only rest in us, we got to pull that Spirit out and we got to give it to somebody else. We got to be able to entangle the minds of people to where they can understand the reality of what God's taking them. Now, if, if, if all we're going to do is save them or get them saved and not get them moving, we still have lost. We got to get people working. Ministry is working. Ministry is moving. And because you're in ministry and not just in church, we're not, we're, just, we're not just having church. We're doing ministry. And so ministry causes me to get... Now, now, now uh, I know I get crazy sometimes. I, I ask y'all why I go by brushing your teeth. But uh, how many of y'all clean your house up? Mm. Now, would you have a dirty house? Would you no. sit in the house and walk over stuff? No, definitely. Just, it won't do it. What? No. But do anybody have to come in there and tell you to do it? No. Okay. Well, now, now tell me this. Now tell me this. Tell me this. Why is it that when it comes down to God's work, we won't do it until somebody says it? If I know what to do, right? Now, when, when people ask you to borrow your money, when people ask you, because we're, we're, we're lenders over here, we're not, we don't borrow money. We're lenders. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking that into existence. Uh, <laughs> when, when people ask to borrow your money, when people ask to borrow your money, and, and, and you know, we're strong in this area, when, when people, we're, we're strong in this area. Well, you think about that I got an answer at all times. I, I got an answer, right? I got that. Well, if, if, if I'm going to do it that way, you always remember that they owe you, right? right? Well, it's just like cleaning the house. You don't ever have to tell me to clean my house if I know to clean my house. It's automatic. I'm going to get up. I'm going to make the bed up. I'm going to sweep the floor, back in the floor, wash the sink out, wash the dishes, just whatever I need to do. Because one thing now, my mama taught me this now, don't ever let nobody come to your house and it's dirty. I don't, I don't know about you young folk now. Mama, mama tell you in a minute, uh, Sally coming over here, get up and, and back in that football. You ain't, she ain't going to come to mama's house and something's out of place. God is saying the same thing. He said, don't ever let nobody come in to you in your rack. God wants to, God wants to get to a place to where we are collectively in excellence. We got to walk in. Excellence. And I'm talking about what God is taking us right now. And, and, and I know I, I jumped about five or six different things. What God is taking us right now, it, it's going to be so awesome. I want us to walk into what God is taking us. But it's going to take his spirit to do it. You can't do it in a physical way. Ella, when, when you start dancing, honey, it's ministry. People are going to get word from ministry. I'm talking about people just you know, urging the door. Stuff comes out just urging the door. When they come in that door back there, it's a word going to drop on them because of what's in this place. But we got to understand the pouring out that God has designed for us. And we got to start receiving it that way. We don't ever want nobody to come in Omega and feel like God's presence is not here. Amen. Don't ever want to, want to come in here and we don't walk in a way to where we can cherish the love that God has given us. We got to understand that this knowledge that God has given us is for somebody else. I told you on Sunday that even the money we have, it's not our money, it's God's money, and he allowed us to manage the money. Now, anytime we get to that place where we don't want to do it God's way, we tell God, I can't do this. I'm not set up for this. But what God said is, because I gave it to you, I chose you for this. So what, what Paul said, if you're going to commit this to faithful men, I need some strong men. I need some strong people that don't mind saying what God is saying. Amen. Because see, at the, at the end of the day, and I, and I keep saying this, and God keeps showing me this, now this place is going to fill up. It, it's going to fill up. It's already done. Children, church, I mean, people, church, we're going to have different stuff going on. But we got to get ready. We can't be lazy about doing it. Amen. Amen. And then you can't make your, uh, I, let me say it this way, you can't make your schedule around what you want and say, well, we put God on the back burner. Amen. Because we got to walk in excellence. God, God is calling for us to walk in that. I'm, I'm about to finish. I'm about to fact, I got, I got a few minutes. Now, uh, where, where was that? He said, when you give this to people, he said, not only will the righteousness of God rest on your life, 
He said, but the knowledge of God. The, the knowledge of God. The knowledge. The knowledge. Knowledge. How many of you want to know more about Christ? Amen. Amen. I need to know more about Christ. And, and see, what God says is that when, when you commit this thing, he said, the more you give out, the more I give back to you. Now, in Isaiah 54, you know, I quote the scripture often that he'll give us a tongue to learn. Yeah, there's a lot of things that we can talk about because that spirit has injected itself in us. And so when we start talking, we, we actually give out the answers that, that people ask of us. And we know the right answer. Now, I was reading a story. I was reading a story uh, on my computer, and I printed it out. Uh, this, these girls was in college. And one of the girls mentored the other girl. And she said she noticed that she would always ask her about being saved. Because the girl, she always cared about it. She always talked about the Lord. And she asked her, she said, well, I want to be saved. And so she said in her, I think her sophomore year, senior year, uh, she got saved. She got, she got saved. And so she would ask the girl a question. And the girl would say, I don't, I don't know, but I'm going to get back with you. And she would go and, and she would come back. And she would always give a biblical answer about what she asked. But she found out that she wasn't reading that. She was going to a lady that mentored her. That lady was telling her what to tell her, and she would tell, and then there was a woman that, that was mentioning the lady that she was asking. So, so it was a chain reaction. Somebody was mentoring somebody to get that person to the right place. Now, that's all we are in here. We're ministers. We, we, are, we are all ministers in here, and so all we're trying to do is get people to the right place. Now, I said this, I said this often, and I'm closing up. That's why I don't like clicks in churches. I don't like junk. We won't have junk, we won't have fights. Kill it, close it out, close the door, get out the door. This might not be the place for you. Because we won't do it because it's not here that we might get in the fights and get in the stuff. We're not gonna kill people trying to do something that we feel that I don't like. I don't care if you don't like it, if it ain't about God. Amen. So we don't do, we don't, we don't do those kind of things. It's about mentoring people to the next place. And if I can get people to the next place, because we got men that's not at that place where they need to be. We got women not at that place. But it's people in here that are committed to the work of Christ. And so what God does, he assigns us. And when we start having these little fellowships and things, and, and you walk over and talk to such such person, you forget you. You start talking about what God said. And you'll never know what that person is going through. Because all they need is somebody to tell them there's a better way. Amen. That's, and that's, that's what it's about. But we won't have the, we won't have the junk. We won't have the junk. I've been through the junk. You know what I mean? I mean, uh, days I've sat in offices, listened to people rattle about stuff that didn't matter. And then you're thinking, I know they didn't call me in for this. So we kill it now. It's going to kill it. And once you kill it, it's about this. It's, it's, it's all about bless you. It's all about this. It's not about, it's not about our feelings. Your feelings get hurt uh, uh, many times. We're human. They're going to they get hurt. But the Bible says, let me tell you what the Bible says. The Bible says, you'll be offended, but the offense ought to make you strong. That's what the word says. Now. And so if it's not making me stronger and it's pulling me down, get rid of that that's pulling you down. And let's keep moving. That God will get the glory out of what we're doing. Amen. Amen. We got about 10 minutes, so I'm going to stop right there. Woo! Y'all about woke me out. <laughs> Thank God again tonight for y'all being here. Thank God for Miss Parks for being with us tonight. Uh, she's from, uh, I need to tell her where you're from. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God for Miss Park being with us tonight. Wow, somebody else coming in that door. We going home, y'all. Uh, <laughs> amen, amen. We gonna have to give them. We gonna have to give them our notes, y'all. Yeah, we gonna give y'all our notes. I'm gonna tell y'all what time to start next time. <laughs>
Let me out. We'll give y'all our notes. They did. What you said, Miss Cynthia? That's what you call a sustained effort. Oh, now she want to mentor somebody. Now that's, hey, y'all, that's encouragement, isn't it? They don't feel bad now. <laughs> Amen. Uh, but we do. We thank God for everybody being here tonight. And uh, just thank God for what he's doing. Um, I want y'all to be praying, though, since I do have three or four more minutes. I want y'all to be praying. We are, we are really trying to, to make the church look better. It's a lady came Saturday. She said that uh, the church looked plain on the outside, but she came on the inside and looked like, Wow, she didn't know this much in here. And so uh, I'm actually trying to get the church on the outside to look different. Uh, but it's going to take all of us. Y'all just keep praying that God will continue to feed me. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of the money that spent, I spent it. But it's about what God's saying. So it's, it's not about you got to put no more in. If God said put some in, that's what you do. Uh, but I thank God for where I am. I thank God for where I am. So uh, just keep praying for me. But I stay strong in what God wants me to do. Is there any prayer requests we need to know for tonight? No, 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 no. I was looking for something else. All right. Yeah, Y'all got some humor tonight. Uh -huh. Came out of a lot of names and stuff. <laughs> to commit this work, oh God, to strong people, strong men, strong women, uh, strong children, oh God, because we realize even today that we're living in a, in a battleground, in a terrible society, oh God, where darkness is all around us. But well, Master, you told us that we will have peace, we will have guidance, we will have uh, those things that your spirit will allow in us, oh God, and so we thank you again tonight uh, for what you're doing and, and what you have done. We ask and pray, God, that you continue to bless all of us. Uh, bless our homes and bless our jobs, bless our, our, our families, oh God, bless our communities, bless our nation. Uh, we pray, Master, now for uh, just things around us that, Master, we don't uh, understand, we don't control, we don't 
uh, understanding in different areas of God. But Master, we realize that you know all things. And so, God, we pray tonight that not only will the world understand it, the Christian community would understand it, but we as a people uh, in different entities, oh God, would understand the work that we need to do in our places, uh, the preparedness, oh God, that we need to make, oh God, and the effort, the sacrifice we need to make, oh God, that we'll continue to build kingdoms uh, on your behalf. We pray, Master, now for the names that was called out, yes. oh God, the different areas that was called out for, oh God, and uh, the reason the name was, we pray, Master, now that uh, you were blessed, that you would lay hands, that you would continue to let your spirit uh, fall upon these people, oh God, fall in these people, oh God. And Master, that where there are some may be weak and there are some in areas, oh God, that don't know you, uh, there are some that have not committed totally to you, God. And, uh, there are some that, that realize they know your name, they know uh, the work, what you do, Master, but they don't know you. And so, God, we pray, Master, now that you are blessed in a mighty way, Master. We continue to pray, oh God, that you are blessed, uh, the young man that had the accident, the wreck, oh God, that's fighting for life. Uh, yes. We pray, oh God, that you would touch in such a way, oh God, to let him continue to know that you are a healer. We pray for our football teams. We pray for individuals, oh God. We pray for, we pray for blood pressure. We pray for sickness, oh God. We pray, Master, now that you will cause a, a, a move, oh God, upon every area, oh God, of our lives, oh God. And Master, we'll continue to see your manifestation. We pray, Master, now that we will not be so traditional, we've been out so stuck, oh God, that, Master, we won't look at a new move and a new way, oh God. We'll continue to follow what you've given unto us, oh God. Your spirit will fall upon us, oh God, as it did the day of Pentecost. And that your spirit will move through us, oh God, like it did in that room, oh God. And fire will come, oh God. Burning will come, oh God. Ambition will come, oh God. Commitment will show itself, oh God. Obedience will, will rise, oh God, in us, oh God. We continue to pray, Master, that you continue to bless this night. And as you bless this night, oh God, bless this week, God. Bless us that we'll continue to carry through, oh God. And those things that, that we do in secret, oh God, let you be an anointing from you, Master. That those things will be revealed in every area, oh God. And Master, we'll see it for ourselves, oh God. Because we're in the area, oh God, that we believe that we're at the right place. But Master, show us ourselves, oh God. Show us those things, oh God, that have held us back and held us down, God. We pray, Master, now that you'll bless us in an open fashion, oh God. That Master, everybody will continue to understand that we're following you. Thank you again, oh God, for Omega. Thank you, oh God, for these, your people. Thank you for their commitment, oh God. Thank you for their sacrifice. Thank you for what they're doing even right now, oh God. We bless you now that you'll continue to have giftings in us, oh God, that Master, we can continue to do a great work. Thank you, God, for those people, oh God, you put in our way. Thank you for our assignments, oh God. Thank you, Master, that we can just say yes to you tonight. And we thank you again for tonight. Thank you for these, your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.